everyone, I'm here today to talk about the evolution of YA and how it sort of developed over the years. And this came about because I've been filming, filming a bookshelf tour recently and that made me realise that, obviously I knew that YA didn't exist when I was younger, it made me realise just what I had to read instead of YA because YA really wasn't a thing and I thought it's interesting to look at YA, how it has developed over the years, what it started off as, how it is now, and I just thought this would be a really interesting video idea, basically. So in case you haven't watched my bookshelf tour, in that, which is part one, where I mainly sort of discover this, um, I show you the sort of books that I used to read as a teenager, which were things like this. This is a point horror, and it's by R.L. Stein, And there were loads of different sort of these, there was just like there was point, what are they called? Point crimes, there's point horrors, there's just like normal points and they just sort of covered different genres and mainly they focused on teenagers and it was the sort of thing like that I had to read if I wanted to read something about teenagers basically. And this was good, I enjoyed these, I read them many 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 times but it didn't satisfy my reading desires. It left me as a teenager very underwhelmed. I, I wanted more. So as a teenager, I then started reading a lot of classics. This one, particularly Great Expectations, I read many times. I just was looking for something else. I felt too old for kids' books. I didn't feel old enough for like typical adulty kind of books. I thought that they were all very sort of either difficult to read or very romancy and I wasn't into that. So I moved on to classics. So I read a lot of classics as a teenager because I didn't have many options and classics are something that I now am sad with myself with that I don't read enough of and I really would like to try and start reading more classics again. It is a goal this year for me to try and do that. I've not really got there yet with that but hopefully I can start getting into some more classics again. This led to me sort of perusing the bestsellers shelves a lot as I started getting a little bit older. I was like I'm still looking for that, that something. And the first book that I read that sort of helped me discover that there is other stuff out there for me was this book. And this is a third book in the Shopaholic series, Shopaholic Ties the Knot. I wasn't aware that it was the third book when I bought it. I was just like, oh, that's a cool cover. I read the back, I was like, oh, that sounds fun. Read it, devoured it. I then moved on to all of the Shopaholic books. And that was when my love of Sophie Kinsella began. But again, I just, I really feel like I almost missed out as a teenager by YA not existing because I would have just devoured so many books. I was just, I felt lost. I feel like it's the same problem that early 20s have in this day and age because you're looking at books going, right, I can read the odd YA, but I don't identify with it. I can read some adult books, but I don't identify it. There was never anything to identify with when I was in my teens and it was really irritating. So at this point, I want to look at YA and where it sort of started developing. In my early 20s, this came out. I think it was my early 20s, probably. And this is where it all sort of started building up Twilight. I read this series over and over again, just devoured them, just literally finished one, started the next book, went back to the first one, rinse and repeat. I just did that all the time. Um, and I think a lot of people did the same thing. And from here, this is where things started building in the YA genre. I haven't checked publication dates of these following three books. So I I'd, I'd have hashed this up a little bit, I suppose. But basically from here, things started developing in the YA sort of genre. Everything was very vampire-y at first, really. Like, I got the Vampire Diaries series on my Kindle and read those. Not all of them. They were a bit rubbish. I do own them all. I, I might read them all one day, but I haven't yet got to that point. And, yeah, this is where everything just started developing. The dystopian started setting in. I should have picked up some of my dystopians off my shelves and I haven't. But, you know, things like Divergent, it became a very big thing. Then the fantasy started coming in, so you've got things like uh, City of Bones. Oh, dystopian. I was holding one the entire time. So The Darkest Minds, this was very big a few years ago. I've still not read it, so I feel a bit funny holding this book up, but, you know. 
And of course, contemporaries started really kind of coming into the mix as well. I've not read this either, so but you get my point. They were just like exam example books to hold up. And I feel like YA has gone through phases. So right now I'd say it's in a couple of phases. First of all, you've got like the thriller phase because thrillers are so big right now. It's like the in thing to read. Um, fantasy is also very big. Dystopian is starting to come back a little bit, I've noticed. And you've also got contemporary as ever, but it's dealing with more hard-hitting things. So you've got things like uh, drug abuse, you've got like books like The Hate You Give that are really important that talk about the black rights movement and you've got books all about race and just raising awareness to loads of these different things, which is great. Which leads me on to a book that I have also got that I've not read yet either and that is Am I Normal Yet by Holly Bourne. And this is obviously a book that is very well received in the community. The whole series is, the whole series features this group of friends and it's like quite a feminist novel. And again, I just feel like this is the direction that YA is now going. YA is very much going into the sort of making people aware. It's not just, it's not always just like, I'm taking a risk here, okay, because I said I've not read it. It's not just all just fluffy books. There is so much more to it. And I feel like my generation did miss out a bit by not having YA around when we were younger. That said, I also feel like this is a lot of the reasons why you'll find older people devouring YA. We're happy to read it. And obviously you can read YA at any age anyway. But I feel like my generation particularly love to dip into the odd YA book here and there. Obviously we still read our adult books, but we are more happy to try out YA books just because we didn't have it when we were younger. We missed out. I mean, sure, we grew up with Harry Potter, which was fantastic, but we didn't have something that we could identify with. So I don't really know where I'm going with this video from this point onwards, but I just thought it was interesting to take a little look at this sort of progression. If you've got anything you want to comment about this video down below, yes, I realise I probably missed loads out, so feel free to comment with things about that you want to talk about in terms of how YA has progressed over the years. And yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye bye.